Hey, it's Heidi Rain. Welcome back for another episode of Addiction and Relationships, all about recovery with Heidi Rain. And if you're new here, I just want to take a minute and say, welcome home. I am so glad you found me. This is a big place, the interwebs, uh, YouTube, and the podcast. And so if you're finding me here, I'm going to trust that it's for a reason, that it's on purpose. And I'm going to just trust in the fact that when you listen to this episode today, you will be restored in some way. You will have hope again or have some insight, a radical new way to think about things or to look at things that just offers you some peace. I want you to leave this session today, this interaction with me today, feeling better about yourself and your situation than you did when you came to the video in the first place. So today, as you know, is all about rebuilding trust. Now, trust in and of itself is a very complicated thing, but when you throw addiction into the mix, trust is super complex. And because of its complexities, it can be really hard to figure out a way to rebuild the trust again. The addict or alcoholic or person who betrayed you in your life is saying things to you on a daily basis, like, you know, good people forgive (laughs) or they're, you know, throwing the the uh, moral code on you, right? Well, you've got to have a heart to forgive and and you should forgive me. And that ended a long time ago. And now I'm a new person. And especially if somebody has gone into treatment and they've gotten out and now they're saying, well, listen, that all that happened before is what happened in the past. And when you talk about that, it triggers me back up. So you've got to learn to trust me from this day forward. And part of you desperately, of course, wants to be able to trust. But the truth is you're stuck. And you're scratching your head and wondering, what do I say to them when they continually ask me over and over again just to trust them? Or when they're asking me to be intimate with them and and trust isn't there and I don't even have the the bandwidth to, to, to make myself be in a more intimate situation with this person because the trust is gone. I mean, if love were a house, wouldn't trust be the foundation of the house? And let's say that you're trying to remodel a house with your significant other and they're up there hanging curtains and they're ripping up tiles and laying new floors and they're ripping down the cabinets and making new pretty cabinets and painting them and doing all the things. And you could spend all your lifetime doing that, making it aesthetically beautiful. But if the foundation is cracked, eventually it all crumbles again over and over and over again. So I'm going to explain how to rebuild trust today in a way that over my 20 plus years of working specifically in the area of addiction, recovery, codependence, relationships, I think that there's a system to trust. It's actually a three-step process in my mind. And when I walk clients through it, either separately or together, what I find is that that trust is restored. And from that place of restoration, everything else is possible. The communication gets better. The intimacy gets better. The relationship gets stronger, but we have to start with trust and there's a system. So I've taken some notes today because I don't want to leave anything out. I definitely want to want to share this with you uh, uh, and and not forget a step because each and every one is, is critical uh, along the way. So there's, there's three components. Okay. So the first thing that you need to have in order to trust somebody to move forward after addiction or while they're in recovery is you've got to have a really firm understanding of what the hell happened. Now, addiction lives in the dark. It thrives off of secrecy and lies. And there's a lot of things that you probably do not know. And still, those are the things that keep you up at night wondering, well, was there an infidelity during this fight? You know, were they using other substances? How much of this is true and how much of this is a lie? How much, you know, and, and you can't, you really can't move forward with somebody unless you have a very full picture because that's what enables you to having all the details. That's what enables you to go into something eyes wide open instead of still feeling a, your way around in the dark. If there are secrets that are still being hidden from you, how can you possibly move forward when you don't even have the whole story? Now, there are many people that when they get into recovery, they believe in this amends process. They say, hey, make amends. And you're waiting for that step. You're like, hell yeah, let's get there. Let's make that step. But there's a caveat to that step. It says make amends and you know talk about all these things unless you believe it'll bring harm to another person. Now, I think that a lot of people in recovery misuse 
and abuse this concept. And they think to themselves, well, if I tell them the whole truth and all the things that I've actually done in my addiction, then it will hurt them. And it's, it's, it's going to bring more, do more harm than good. And that's the idea that they hold in their, their head so that they can justify not telling you the whole truth. But I want to let you know, full transparency is a must. Even if you, as the alcoholic or addict, think that it's going to hurt the other person, you have to give them enough credit to be able to withstand and see the truth of everything that's gone down. That includes if there's been infidelities, what kind of substances, you know, you, you could, the addict or alcoholic convinces themselves, well, none of that stuff matters and it's all irrelevant and just know that it was really bad. And now I'm better, but that's just not, that doesn't help you make sense of all of this. That doesn't help you get back to the place of being able to trust when you don't even know what the hell fully happened. Transparency is extremely important. And you as the person in recovery, owe your partner, the victim of your perpetrated crime, which is addiction, which acts the same as narcissistic abuse. You owe that person the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And then let them decide if they want to stick around through all that, you know, holding the truth, hiding the truth, only given bits and pieces of the truth is manipulation, period. You might be convincing yourself you're just being a good person and you're just helping them because you're not going to hurt them more. But the truth is you're continuing to manipulate somebody by not being totally honest about what happened. Okay. Uh, the next thing that needs to happen after you get the whole story and the whole truth, step number two is you, you, you both, you and your partner who've had these trust issues need to understand the impact of what went down. You as the partner of an addict or an alcoholic have had significant trauma. Many times that trauma looks like complex post-traumatic stress disorder, meaning you want to trust and maybe you feel like, okay, you can rebuild that trust, but all of a sudden you find yourself getting triggered up and sent back into this land of like anxiety and confusion and, and this, you know, your heart starts racing and it could happen just from the phone call in the middle of the night that reminded you of the phone call in the middle of the night you used to get, or they're late for dinner. And it reminds you of how they were late for dinner. And the last time that they were late for dinner, bad things happened. Or you look at them and they look a little suspicious or under the influence. And this shrapnel is like, you've been in, you've been a victim as the partner of somebody else's internal war with themselves. An addict or an alcoholic is at war with themselves. And that war gets acted out on every single person in a vicinity in and in a radius of that person. And how it, how it affects you is this shrapnel. You have the fallout from all of this horrible situation that you've been in. So, you know, when I work with couples and I do this work a lot, and by the way, if you want more help and you want to have a program of restoration designed for you and your whole family, or just for you even, you can go over to HeidiRain.com and schedule a 90-minute intensive consultation, a strategic consultation with me. And we'll listen to your situation, understand all the components of it. First of all, there's nothing like being validated and heard and understood. So having a Sherpa, a psychological Sherpa that knows the lay of the land that can help you make your way across this mountains of, of, of obstacles ahead of you to learn how to trust is extremely important. And I, I can be that person for you. So if you want me to do that for you, go to HeidiRain.com. And I do this all the time with couples. We sit down and we talk about how you have been impacted. And the partner's job is just to listen to just absorb all the ways that their behavior has impacted and affected you and actually validate the things you're saying, understand so that when you're behaving a certain way, they understand that that's your recovery too. They're not the only ones in recovery. Oh, well, I'm better now. That'll never happen again, but it left a freaking mark. And so now you're, you're being expected to just move on like nothing ever happened because now they're sorry and they're getting better. And then you guilt yourself. Why can't I? It's because you, you have to sit with what happened. You have to be validated for the things you've been through and the way you've been impacted. And a person that loves you will be willing to hear that. It'll be hard as hell, 
that's why it's good to have the support person to, 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 uh, coach you through the session and to instruct the session in a healthy way and hold the safe space for you guys to be able to do this. But you've got to be able to do this second step, which is understand the impact. So number one is they get clean. They come clean. They tell you everything so that nothing is hidden. There are no secrets and no lies anymore. Step number two is you get to talk with your partner about the impact of their behavior on you, how it's affected you, the marks that is left, the things you're working through and your own recovery. And then after you've done step one and step two, then you can rebuild the trust. Because step one and step two is rebuilding trust, but step three is actually the trust process. And it's a triad. I want you to picture a triangle, one of the strongest structures right on earth, whether the ancient aliens did it or I don't know what, and here's the structure. And I want you to think about the structure of trust as a triangle. And there are three components to trust. The bottom, the most important piece of the trust triad is trust of self. Now, I just want to start with trust of self. You have lost trust in yourself and it's not your fault. You have been gaslit, manipulated, and guilted out of your own judgment. And right now you don't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself to see the flags anymore, to know what's up or down. And again, like I said, until you come, until you get out of the addiction is like a cult, you know? And when people get out of a cult, they're like, how the hell did you fall for that? Like, what, didn't you see that coming? Like, and then you, addiction works just like a cult. It manipulates you and makes you forget your your own values, your own what you know, and it and it makes you question everything, and it and it makes you believe in stuff that's not real. So, of course, you have to learn how to rebuild trust in yourself, so that you can tap back into that divine intuition that you had once upon a time that you know is real. And you might be saying, "Well, Heidi, I always knew my intuition, but I ignored it." Well, isn't that part of trust in yourself? Isn't that that base of the triad, which is learning how to trust your own judgment and follow your intuition and your instincts? I have a whole course that's dedicated to just the recovery process for you. It's called Toxic Relationship Recovery. You can find it over at HeidiRain.com. It's a self-study course, and it'll walk you through how to rebuild trust in yourself, how to find your intuition again and hone it and go through. And it's And it takes time. It's a process. It's a deep dive into yourself. But but because I've worked with people for so long and I see how wounded they are from this addiction and codependency and everything they've been through, you, they needed a system. So I created one to help you heal. It's over at HeidiRain.com. Go get it. Make the investment in yourself. Start to heal. Rebuild the trust in yourself. Now, also the addict or alcoholic in recovery has to build trust in themselves again. And in fact, something really great to say to them when they say to you, well, you need to trust me. Why don't you trust me? You should just trust me. I'm a different person now. I want you to look at them and I want you to say, when you can trust yourself not to hurt yourself anymore on purpose or on accident, then I will trust you not to hurt me on purpose or on accident anymore. But first, you have to trust you with yourself before we can do anything else, right? The addict or alcoholic rebuilds trust in themselves that they're going to make the right choice. They're going to protect themselves. They're going to love themselves, which is a verb, not a feeling. They're going to do the things they need to do necessary in order to stay in recovery and keep their lives moving in the right direction. Once you see somebody that can trust themselves to do the right thing to take care of themselves, then you can start to consider, well, maybe they can take care of me okay too. But not before then, not before then at all. And then after trust of self comes the other walls of trust for that triad. The second wall is trust of God. Many people in addiction have a trust issue with God. Who, who is their God? The God of their own understanding. A lot of them have religious trauma. They have no concept of their connection with their higher power. They don't trust God. They say they do, but they try to be God or put, make God other people or make drugs the God. Alcohol's the God. They don't trust their own higher power. My husband and I are work, work together, Doug. I'm sure you've seen him on the videos. And we are both, we consider ourselves psycho-spiritual teachers where it's more than just the psychology. 
of course, you want to learn how to master your own mind and emotions, and you want to, you want to master self first, but it's also about creating that connection with a higher power that, you know, has your absolute best interest at heart that you're co-creating with. When we have our retreats, Doug, who's a master uh, hypnotherapist and a practitioner of neurolinguistic programming takes our, our, uh, audience, our participants through experiential exercises where he opens the portal for you to be able to discover your relationship with your own higher power. And that's what he does. He opens the portal. He opens the door and you can walk through it. And he's, he's a miracle of a human being. Uh, it's his gift to be able to open that door for people to walk through, to, to come to one of our events and have him just you know, trust him to walk you through this process is unbelievable. We have a virtual event coming up in December uh, together that we're going to be doing that you want to check out. It's over at HeidiRain.com as a chance to be with Doug and have that open and connected. In that retreat, by the way, that virtual seminar, it's called Freedom from Addictions. We're going to be breaking down how this whole thing happened, how to understand addiction, many things. But that's, that connection with your higher power is extremely important. And I'm going to tell you, with the triad, if you master the relationship with self, a trust in self first, and then you cultivate a trust in a higher power, a God of your own understanding, Understanding. The last piece of the triad is trust in others. And I assert that it comes naturally when the other two are in place. When you trust yourself, you trust your judgment. You're not misjudging circumstances anymore. You're not denying your own intuition. And when you add a divine component to that trust of self and the ego now has a divinity component to it, you are, you are divinely guided. You're not going to be, you're going to see the flags. You're going to see what to walk away from. You're going to get that knowing and that nudge. Oh, it's time to end. So many of you are still in a stay or go situation. You have no idea. Again, I've tried to think of everything because I've been with this problem for 20 years, helping my clients go through. And I created a course called stay or go. It's a seven step process to help you get clear on what you really want to do. That's a self-study course. Go grab it. I try to think about you. I think about you all the time. I think about you all day and all night. I think the things you're dealing with and wrestling with, the problems that you have, the things that are keeping you up at night. And then what I do is my husband and I try to create programs and safe containers to help you heal. That's our life's work. That's our mission. That's why we're here. And, and we started, we didn't come by this like thinking, well, this is where we want to focus. Both of our life paths have led us to this point. And we have learned how to cultivate trust in ourselves, in our judgment, in our higher power, and in each other. And Doug and I have this unbreakable triad, this holy union, this holy trinity of trust. And that's the type of relationship that I want for you. We can help you have it. Go over to HeidiRain.com, learn about the different offerings that we have, come alongside, join us, become part of our family. Doug and I consider ourselves family empowerment warriors. Uh, and it's it, the acronym is FEW, Family Empowerment Warriors, one of the few. And if you want to become one of the few and you want to take command of your life and you want to be the king of your castle or the queen of your castle and you want to rule the kingdom together, the two of you in this triad of trust and truth, then I implore you to take the next steps and let us work with you. All right. Love you so much. Take excellent care of yourself. And we will see you next week on a Monday with a new video and a new podcast every single Monday. All right. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Take excellent care of yourself. Start the week off right. This is the week of trust. We'll see you soon.